Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be transforming the all-new Lenovo Legion Y700 gaming tablet into a desktop PC. Now this is the brand new 2023 model, and we're working with more features and a lot more power than the last generation of the Y700, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video because there's actually a lot that you can do with this thing. I recently did a full review video on this. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll leave a link in the description, but I did kind of want to go over the features here real quick, just in case anybody's interested. But basically what we have here is an Android gaming tablet from Lenovo. This is coming from their Legion line of products. And as a gaming tablet, it performs absolutely amazingly. This does have dual stereo speakers tuned by JBL, dual USB type C connectors. Now the one on the very bottom will not transfer video, but the one over here on the side is what we're going to plug into to get to a larger display. I went over quite a bit in my original review video, so if you want to learn a little more, definitely check that out. Link is in the description. When it comes to the specs for the CPU, we've got that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. One Cortex X2 core up to 3.19 gigahertz, three A710 cores at 2.75 gigahertz, and four A510 cores at 1.8 gigahertz. You can pick this up with either 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 up to 512 gigabytes of internal storage. It's got an 8.8 .8 inch 144 hertz display. It's got an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, resolution of 1600 by 2560. Supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, up to 500 nits of brightness. Those built-in dual stereo speakers tuned by JBL sound absolutely amazingly. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, 6,550 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt quick charging capabilities. And this is running Android 13 right out of the box. Now, in order to get this connected to a larger display, be it a monitor or a TV, there's at least one thing you'll need. If your monitor doesn't support USB Type-C video in, you'll need a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. Really cheap over on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description, and with this one here, you get a bunch of I.O. that can be added on. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this connected. Now, with the monitor I have here, it does support USB Type-C video in, but like I mentioned, you could always use a dock like this or a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. We do need to go into the secondary USB Type-C port on the side of the tablet, but as you can see, it's now mirroring the display. And some people might be totally satisfied with this, just having, you know, video out of USB Type-C on these tablets is really awesome. But luckily, Lenovo has added several different modes here, We've actually got a few that we can choose from. The tablet itself does support what they call PC mode. So just on the tablet screen itself, we can actually give it more of a desktop PC interface by entering PC mode right here. And unfortunately, in PC mode, it's still only going to mirror this display. What I want is a secondary display, and it's actually really easy to do. We still get a much bigger screen to work with, and we can actually up the resolution to 4K 60 FPS in extended display mode, and we will not have those black bars on the side. Now, PC mode is actually great on the built-in tablet screen. You can connect a keyboard, Bluetooth, you can connect a USB keyboard if you wanted to. I think they also make a keyboard folio case for it, but I think the best option for adding a larger display is extended mode. So as soon as we actually exit PC mode, it's going to prompt us to go into extended display mode. And now we've got that full screen. So we don't have the black bars on the side. We've got a higher resolution and it actually defaults to the stock resolution of whatever monitor or TV you have it connected to. This is a 4K monitor. So it does go up to 4K 60. And from here, we've got access to all of our apps. It also supports resizable windows, multiple windows. We can have a ton of apps up and running on the uh, external display. And we can also run applications directly on the tablet at the same time. For this, I'm just going to start up a few apps on the external monitor. Okay, so now I've got Google Play. I've got the PSP emulator up and running. Also have a file explorer. You can do any of these apps you want. You could have a photo editor up and running. You could have Chrome up and running. And now on the tablet, we've also got Minecraft up and running. I'm using a wireless keyboard and mouse, and it's going to be shared between the tablet and the larger display. Some games and applications do lock the mouse and keyboard to that specific app until you press escape on the keyboard, then we can actually bring it right back up to the larger display. But this is great for multitasking. You could have YouTube up and running on the tablet screen, and then on the larger screen, you could have a photo editor, a web browser, document editor, whatever you want. This combination works in any way. 
And speaking of YouTube and video playback, this does support Widevine Level 1, so you can get that HD content from your favorite apps. We start up YouTube, most of the apps are going to go in kind of a window mode here, but we can go full screen or resize them completely, it's really up to you. We're going to go with 4K 60 HDR. Up here, we can swap it to 4K from the advanced section. So 4K 60, and I also want to turn on stats for nerds, I know it's a bit hard to see. But the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in this tablet can definitely handle 4K 60 playback. And USB Type-C video out does support HDR as long as your adapter supports it and your monitor. So like I mentioned, I'm plugged in with USB Type-C here, does support HDR over USB Type-C, and it looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it's a really crystal clear 4K picture. So it works out really well for media playback on an external display, but uh, what about work? Now you can actually get a lot done with something like this. Web browsing, we've got a big screen to work with. Again, we can resize this. We could have two apps side by side, three, four apps if you need it. And we can also separate our Chrome windows so we could have two browsers up and running. Now if you don't want to use Chrome, you don't have to. As long as it works for Android and you can get it from Google Play or sideload it, it's going to work on this device. Another thing I actually was experimenting with was uh, just video editing here. One mobile app that I personally like to use for video editing is Adobe Rush. So it works here, and originally I think this was only released for Samsung devices, but now I think you can basically download it from Google Play on anything. So if you wanted to do some video editing directly on the tablet, it does make it a lot easier having that bigger display. Plus, we now have a mouse and keyboard, and if you're used to using a desktop for video editing, you know how easy it is just to use that mouse to kind of scrub through your timeline. In my opinion, it makes it so much easier to have something connected to one of these if you wanted to do some video editing. So yeah, there's actually a lot of business and work that you can get done with this. Uh, you need a good document editor. There's several over on Google Play. Just download it. Now you've got a bigger screen to work with, keyboard and mouse connected. But uh, one of the main reasons that I actually like connecting these tablets to a larger display is for gaming and emulation. And this is actually really cool because after all, this is a Legion gaming tablet. Down on the tablet itself, we can still access Legion Space, which is our gaming-centric features for this tablet. So we can go to Balance Mode, Low Power Mode, or Performance Mode. And we've also got our Overlay, which shows us our CPU clock, GPU clock, real-time FPS. So while I'm playing a game, I've got all that information on my tablet screen at any given time. I am at 60 FPS with Call of Duty Mobile here. As you can see, it does look really good on an external display. And obviously, controllers work with this game very well. Another thing I wanted to show off here was some emulation. We'll go with a couple. Uh, first up, we'll do uh, PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Got Chains of Olympus here, which is definitely a harder one to emulate. Controllers are working, we'll load right in, and we are at 5x resolution with this. This tablet will handle any PSP game you throw at it. It'll do the lower end stuff just as well. N64, you want to do some Neo Geo, and it'll also handle PS2 using Ether SX2, GameCube, and Wii. It'll do some Switch games also, but keep in mind the uh, Yuzu emulator is still a bit early, but it's come a very long way in the time it's been on Google Play, and this handles it quite well. And finally, I wanted to show off the Dolphin emulator. Instead of doing GameCube, we're going to go with a Wii game here. So yeah, definitely a huge fan of this tablet. I love the form factor like it is. We've got an 8.4 inch display, uh, definitely a lot smaller than the Samsung tabs. Now the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 does have more power because it's got that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but this is more portable in my opinion. 
and of course we've got several different modes that we can work with if you wanted to connect this to a larger display. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in checking out my full review video, I'll leave a link down below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one of these up, I'll leave a link to where I got this one. I'll also leave some links down below to some HDMI adapters in case you want to get this up and running on something much bigger. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.